can see, we can see the road. Oi! Oh, oh my god. Road. It's hot. That's the road. Maybe we need to go back, right? Yeah. Ah, yeah. There, there. Wow. Oh my gosh. We slept one night in Mahombo and on the next day, so this morning, our driver David, he picked us up in Mahombo and we drove south to Andasibe where we are right now. What you need to know, if your driver has to pick you up somewhere and he has to drive there for a couple of hours or even for a day, you have to pay an extra day. So we paid 50 euros that David could drive up the coast to Mahombo and pick us up. On the way south, we stopped in Tamatava where we went to a really nice market. This market was mainly for locals, what we think. And this is why everything was really cheap. So you can buy spices, clothes. Oops, and the clothes in here. Don't get hurt, feel anything. When will I love? I push you down, push you down. I'm the one for a good time, cold phones, blowing up, breaking my door, but I feel the love, feel the love. Oh, oh. Hot, hot, eh? Yeah? Yeah. Really hot. <laughs> That's why it's like, this is not clouds, eh? This yeah, is like smoke. smoke. Oh. And we finally arrived in Andasibe, which is a really small town. We haven't seen that much. And one more thing you need to know, if you don't want to book a driver who drives you all around Madagascar, which is actually quite expensive as you pay around about 50 euros per day and the petrol, you can also go by taxi bruises. So the buses which go all around Madagascar and they are packed with people. And it's quite cheap. So if you go, for example, from Andasibe to Tana, it costs around about 10 to 12,000 Ariari. And also, for example, from Mahombo to Tamatave is around about 10,000 Ariari. We met a couple who traveled all around Madagascar by taxi bruises. But like I said in the very first video, my preparation video for Madagascar, you need some time. So they traveled for five weeks all around Madagascar. You need time as the bus only goes when it's full with people and they will stop on the way. You don't know where. Okay, so I will summarize our stay in Andasibe a little bit. As I said, we didn't stay in the town of Andasibe, which is actually really small. We didn't see much. There are a couple of um, lodges where you can stay. There are some restaurants, but we stayed a little bit outside, just next to the entrance of the national park. Here, when you wake up, you can hear the Indri, so one of the famous lemurs of Andasibe, you can hear them screaming. When you're in Andasibe, you basically want to see lemurs and you want to see a couple of national parks. When you read through guidebooks, it's quite hard where to go. There are many parks you could visit, but there is like one main park, which is called Analama Sotra or also Park of Andasibe in some guidebooks. So this is the same Andasibe Park or Analama Sotra. And here you can see the Indri, like the famous lemur over here. And then there's also another quite famous park, which is called Mantadia. This is where we went first. So on our first real day, in Andasibe, we did like a three hour hiking through Mantadia. So, just to let you know, when you want to enter the park, you need to pay a park fee which is 45,000 Ariari per person, and this is per day. So, on each day when you want to visit the park, you have to pay 45,000 Ariari. And yeah, to go to Mantadia, to the big, like the biggest parks around that area, you have to drive around about one hour to get there. 
So our guide took us to that park. What happens is that there are several tracks you can do and you pay for each track you do. So we did the three hour track and you pay for the guide 70,000 Ariari. This track was quite nice, but it felt like we were rushing through the jungle. It wasn't as nice as it was in Ranumafana actually. After the three hour track we also did another track which was only about 15 minutes to a like natural pool and this is like a 600 meter walk um, quite flat and you also have to pay the guide so this was like a 40,000 Ariari fee for that guide but I didn't really understand why I mean of course he took us there but um, the way was quite easy and he didn't really explain much so if you plan your trip all around Mandadia National Park maybe read about the different tracks um, as I think at some parts they try to rip you off the main track the longer one was nice to have a guide because he showed you the lemurs but on the other tracks I'm not so sure if you really need to do it on the way back from Mantadia so this was like a half day over here we uh, went to the lodge Vakuna lodge it feels like man-made because uh, you have three kinds of lemurs over here you have the brown lemur the bamboo lemur and the black and white lemur and they are domes domesticated so they are on that island they cannot really leave but they are like free to go they can move around the island, they're not in cages. So you pay 25,000 Ariari for the Bacona Lodge. I'm special shady, yes, I'm the real shady. All you want the slim shadies are just imitating. So won't the real slim shady please stand up? <laughs> please stand up, please stand up. When we came back, we just relaxed. On the next day, we did a like a three hour, two hour trek in the main park, Ana Analama Sotra. The entrance of this park is where you also get your park ticket, so you don't have to drive anywhere. I mean, just around the corner from um, Andasiba town and from our lodge. So you drive there, you pay another 45,000 Ariari per person for like the entrance fee. And then you can do different kind of tracks. We did the Indri 2 circuit, which takes around about two to three hours. There are like proper ways and stairs and everything. It's a bit like touristy, uh, but you also go like off track a little bit to find the Indri. And this was really nice because the Indri is, they are screaming so loud and you come really close. So they're just above your head. Just touch it, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just pet him. It feels very silky, okay? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Be in love. Are they I think eight injuries and there was also a baby. Make sure you start really early because many many groups are going to this park. We started at 6.30 in the morning which is a really good time to start as there was nobody. And after we were done we drove to Tana. So we're back in the capital right now. It took us like three hours to drive from Andasibe to Tana. Yeah, and we tried to find a really nice hotel where we could stay for the last two days or one and a half days. So we're staying uh, quite in the center right now. It was quite hard to find a good hotel. We were reading a lot where you should stay when you stay in Tana. People told us to stay close to the like 
Independence Avenue and the train station. So this is almost around the corner right now. So I show you the door of our room. Look at this. Fish everywhere. So the room is quite small. I mean, that's okay. What I don't like is that we have mosquitoes all over the room. It's like you shower in a submarine. So we will enjoy our last hours in Tana and fly back to Germany. I love you when you sing that song and I got a lump in my throat cause you're gonna sound quite strong. So I want to finish this video with some information you probably need if you start to plan your trip all around Madagascar right now. First of all, how much did we spend? In total, we spent 1,935 euros per person. This includes all the flights, the ferries, the hotels. So this sounds like a lot for two weeks, but also you need to know the flight from Europe to Madagascar was 700 euros per person, which is actually quite cheap, but we also paid for an extra flight within Madagascar which was 250 euros. Like I told you, we also paid for a driver who took us all around Madagascar and we paid 400 euros for the car for eight days. And we also had to pay petrol on top which was 146 euros. And I want to end this video by talking about the people of Madagascar. People of Madagascar are super strong, like you see women carrying like heavy stuff on their head. They're carrying bricks. Even the kids carry heavy, heavy stuff. And what you can see, they walk like for maybe 16 kilometers sometimes to go to the next market. But they are also super poor. So most of them, they don't have electricity. Many people don't have water supply. But on the other hand, they are also always happy to see you, to see those tourists coming to the place. This was something which I was always wondering about. Okay, we got like so much and they are still so happy to see you. So if you have like some like old clothes or something you don't need anymore, this is the place where you can take it and where you can actually give it to some people. And on top of this, they don't even try to rip you off. This is something which really surprised me as well because in Southeast Asia, we were like used to those uh, like people who try to rip off tourists. But here, they have like fixed prices everywhere. It was just a really relaxed way to travel. And people of Madagascar, they say mura mura, which means take it easy. So please take it easy. If my videos about Madagascar helped you to get around, to plan your trip, please give me a thumb up. If you like my videos, please give me a thumb up as well. And if you want to see more travel videos, please hit the subscribe button over here and if you have any question please feel free to post a comment i'm happy to help you i'm happy to answer thank you for watching